we must cross that billion dollar threshold rather sooner than later, hopefully this year. Today, I have the pleasure to welcome in the studio Michael Riedel, who is the CEO of Team Internet. Welcome. Thank you, Jérôme. Great to be here today. It's a pleasure to have you here. So just to present you uh, Team Internet, it's a global online marketing company with origins in Luxembourg. And Michael, you live here in, uh, in Luxembourg. And, and just one number, last year in 2023, uh, the group had a turnover of 837 million dollars. So let's jump right into it. Can you present Team Internet in a few words? Yes, very happy to. And Team Internet has actually started as a project by VIP investment partners here in Luxembourg. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, we've grown up quite a bit and are listed on the London Stock Exchange mm -hmm. and um, are also trading on the OTCQX in New York. But it was a quite, a, quite a journey taking a group of small local companies and turn them into a global player that we are today with, as you said, more than $800 million of revenue in the last year. So the, the key activities that we do are in online marketing, mm -hmm. where, where we connect users on social media with advertisers who advertise on Google, where we basically make the magic happen and bring people on TikTok together with the advertisers who have advertised on Google. Mm -hmm. But we're also active in domain names and uh, many people in this audience will know EuroDNS, um, a very respected peer um, of us in the domain industry based in, in Rue de Lange. Um, so that's then our, our second largest activity in the group. And you're a competitor, I would say, in this segment of uh, web domains, uh, I could imagine, over EuroDNS. Yes, however, EuroDNS sells more directly to end customers, mm -hmm. whereas our specialty is providing large international hosting companies like GoDaddy with exotic domain names from all over the world. Okay, very good. And uh, you, you grew uh, a lot through acquisitions uh, from your origin. And, and just recently, uh, more or less than a week ago, you did another one in Israel. Can you talk about this uh, recent acquisition? Yes, very happy to. So um, you're completely right. Just this Monday, we announced that we completed yet another acquisition uh, that goes by the name of Shines. Shines is a digital content creation and promotion company based in Tel Aviv, the Silicon Valley, as uh, the locals love to call it. Um, our second acquisition actually in, in, in Tel Aviv, so we are over time building a notable hub down there. And what they do is they bring users from Facebook, X or other social media onto, onto websites with so-called listicles where you have content like 20 cocktail recipes for your dinner party or the best 100 US colleges. And in this, embedded in this, in this content, they would then show plenty of ads that, that match the different topics in here. And for us as a company, this was an important expansion. Why? Um, in, online, in online marketing, people think in three stages, the, the so-called conversion funnel, which starts with awareness, just implanting the brand in the brain of, of the consumers, mm -hmm. consideration, where people consider different options, mm -hmm. and then finally the closing, getting the deal done. And um, in this part of consideration, we are already very strong. More than half of our revenue that we generate comes from this consideration phase. Mm -hmm. Then in 2022, through our acquisition of VGL Publishing AG in, in uh, Berlin, we expanded into the conversion segment where you actually close the deal, make that the user buys something from our e-commerce partners like Amazon, but now with, uh, with Shines, we are addressing the awareness segment. And now with these three acquisitions together, we, we cover the entire conversion funnel from awareness down to conversion. Very good. And I, I think it's worth specifying that over the last five years, you did 20 acquisitions to get the full value chain in your, in your industry. Yes, that, that's right. So we've been very busy effectively buying one company every quarter. and. Um, we don't have any plans to seed on that, so M&A is part of our DNA and um, we've proven to be very good at it and constantly deliver exciting new deals at reasonable considerations. Yeah, and I think it's a really good story, of course, for Luxembourg. We talk a lot about substance, of course, and we know that it's extremely important right now to create jobs, to create tax. 
but there's also this other fantastic expertise, which is to start something like uh, Bip did uh, a few years ago and, and grow it to a point where, of course, Luxembourg is part of a very big global business like yours. So let's look at risks and opportunities. What are uh, today your, your goals uh, in the mid and long term? Right. So given that already last year we closed very close to a billion dollars of revenue, mm -hmm. just our our sport or sportive attitude just requires we, we must cross that billion dollar threshold rather sooner than later, hopefully this year. Okay. And um, but as we grow both organically and through M&A, we, we follow what we call the OM Square vision. OM Square stands for online marketing, uh, on, omni, pardon, omni media, omni monetization. And the strategy is that we constantly expand the, num uh, the number of networks to which we are connected from which we actually acquire users, mm -hmm. social media, search engines, um, and in the future also other uh, traffic sources and feed each of these users into the right monetization channel, whether it's an ad that someone booked on Google, whether it is sending the user to Amazon and trying to convert them into a buyer or just presenting to them display ads of, of major brands who just want to promote their, their brand on the internet. And um, as, we, as we follow this pattern, um, either through developing the products ourselves or acquiring companies that accelerate the venue, we are very comfortable that in a very short period of time, we will make it past the billion dollar threshold. Yeah, and I'm sure people who are not very well educated about it, I, I could play that role, will tell you, is there any risk that if the algorithm of, uh, you know, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, etc., change, could your, your business be impacted? That's, that's an excellent question. And many investors ask that question because so many companies had accidents on the, on, the, on the road just because Google changed the search algorithm. With us, it's a bit different because we don't rely on getting our traffic for free from organic searches. We've built algorithms that are so powerful in converting any kind of customer that we acquire that we can actually pay Facebook for the traffic. We can pay TikTok for the traffic. We can even pay Google for the traffic. And we always have a monetization channel that is so powerful that we can get more money out of it than what we spend on the other side. And then it becomes a win-win-win situation. So Facebook, Google, or wherever we buy the traffic then considers us a customer and we need to bid competitive prices in order to get the ad placements. Mm -hmm. But also our partners on the, on the monetization side, which could again be Google or an Amazon, also like us because we create extra revenues for them mm -hmm. that they could not have done themselves because they don't have this process of taking the people off TikTok and converting them into customers of their. And this is, given that we are aligned with all our partners, um, we see a very little risk that they would ever do anything against us. Actually, it's a very symbiotic relationship and our partners want us to succeed because our success is also their success. And that uh, you're more a business facilitator, so you're a partner of Google and the social networks, whereas influencers are basically taking advantage of it and those are at risk of being delisted or demonetized, of course. Uh, so you, you're I, not exposed to those risks. I totally love that term facilitator. That's exactly what it is. Perfect. Right so, and there's one thing we talk about all the time. We've seen the stock markets going completely wild. It's AI. Is this really impacting your business? Are you planning specific uh, investments or specific acquisition to catch up? Or is this more buzz than anything else? Right. So AI has always been in the fabric of our day-to-day -day operations. Mm -hmm. Everything that we do is built on machine learning and deep learning methodologies. As you can imagine, you can't connect 6 billion website visitors, which was the number that we've seen last year, to, to millions of advertisers manually. Everything must be fully automated. And, um, and yet, um, this new this new generation of AI, the generative AI, is, is of course something that we must and do embrace. And therefore, we've, we've built a program which has three pillars. Raising the floor, raising the ceiling, and raising awareness. 
Mm -hmm. Raising the floor basically means doing the things that we've always done just more efficiently, for example, by using ChatGPT or other generative AI tools. Mm -hmm. Whereas then raising the ceiling means training our software engineers in the latest technologies, whether that is generative AI or blockchain, in order to build products that exceed our customers' expectations. Less limitation from technique. Exactly, to basically harness the power of technology to create a better customer experience. And the, and the, and the third layer is then, is then raising awareness. This is then a training program for our senior leadership, which includes elements like critical thinking, creative thinking, negotiation skills and others, so that, that they are just better trained in discovering either the risk of being disrupted mm -hmm. and rather doing it yourself or find opportunities to, to disrupt others. And um, with these three programs in place, we feel well-praised for the future. Perfect, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Jerome.